This is a regular scheduled meeting of the Franklin Township Environmental Commission in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231. Notice of this meeting has been called. Okay. Then we do the roll call. And then we have Walter. Here. Ted. Yeah. Stan. Here. Uh, Robin, is she here? No, not yet. Me, I'm Paul's here. Uh, Jessica. I'm here. Hold on. I'm on with Robin. She says she can't get into the meeting. It says that it hasn't been started. Yeah, well, I had that trouble. Finally, it hooked in. Tell her to um, reload. Yeah, maybe sign it, come out, and come back in. Yeah. 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 Um, easy, you're here. Yep. Yeah. And Maria, is she here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. Okay. Stan and I are both here also, Paul. Uh, he oh. called me. I did. Oh, he did. Arnold, yeah. No, I forgot Arnold. You're right. It's not on this list. <laughs> Ed Pichu, I'm here too. List. Do you need to call Justin? Justin, Justin. yes. Oh, the uh, okay. <laughs> I, I saw him here, but yes. And Ed Pichasnik, I'm here too. Yes, and Tara's here. Councilman Pichasnik is also here. Oh, welcome, welcome. Much better. Yeah. yeah. Oh, then Robin is here. Okay. You, uh... Count Robin here, Ted. Um, I I oh. did. Um, I just want to say just a couple things. Uh, I did get the key to our mailbox from uh, Walter and the and the pass key, so I can get into the town hall. In the mailbox was one letter uh, from somebody representing 415 Canal Walk, uh, Western Canal Road. And they're looking for a letter of interpretation from the, DA, the DEP. Somebody is planning something. There's already a warehouse there. So somebody's planning something additional, I guess. Um, also, I just wanted to mention, since it's not on the agenda and nothing has gone there, I want to thank Stan for working on trying to find substitutes for uh, the two trucks that the town wants to buy this year. Because mm -hmm. it's a truck and a flatbed. And um, we went back and forth with Bob um, Vornlocker. He sent us pictures. Uh, Stan did some research. I did some research. I talked to Ken Penworth. There aren't trucks available in that size at this point to go EV. So um, there's we a contacted uh, We contacted the EP. They sent us a very nice resource, and there are lots of trucks actually available. But apparently, none of them are good enough for our town. So. Yeah, and I talked to Kenworth, and they only had uh, class six and class eight, eight that attract the tra trailers, and six is the bottom of the heavy duty trucks. So, um, and they said the differential, this is Fred Vice information, the differential between their electric truck and the diesel of the same size, the diesel is 125,000, the EV is 300,000. So that's what the DEP brand would cover, right? The balance. I, I don't know. I, I didn't. I didn't know if they had a max range or not. But it's a big range. A yeah. Big, the, the way how it works that they pay the balance between comparable diesel truck and the electric. Yeah. yeah. So, does does um, Warren Locker know that? Does he have the details on that program that you sent out? Yeah, he does. Yeah, Stan, you sent that to him. I think right. You did. Yes. And and he sent us two pictures of trucks that they're looking to buy, and one's a dump truck. A short one, and one's a basically a flatbed with sides, open sides, and no, and no, no roof. It's not a box truck. So, um, so that was something we worked on, and um, I just wanted to mention that. It, uh, there's um, the 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 other thing that came up is Anjec is having a lot of. Like I'm going to pay more attention to Anjec now, um, but um, so I think that's that's my opening re remarks. If somebody wants to. Comment on my opening remarks. That's fine. Um, if not, we'll look at the agenda. Paul, could I share something real quickly? Of course. Yeah, um, I I did receive from the Franklin Women's Club, and uh, they have a meeting tomorrow night, virtual, and I'm going to be talking to them about the, the plastic ban. And then I think in March they have an in-person meeting, and I'll go to them again, and I'll share, give them some bags, and uh, you know. 
try to round out the, that contact uh, with them. Uh, I'll need about 50 bags. And uh, well, thank I'm you, and, you and Robin for those that you did give me. I believe I almost have what I need. Yeah, thank I you. think you probably do. Great. Bye. Yeah. Something I have to share, but I might if you have time to share or I should wait um, later on. I received an email from Jessica Rufus, the biology teacher of Franklin High School. Uh, when well, when would that come under if we if we waited for somewhere in the agenda? Okay. Uh, it's not on the agenda, is it? Why don't, why don't we go through this uh, while well, we did the roll call? Um, I did my report. Um, why don't we do the minutes first? Okay. Okay. And because I do have one change in the minutes, uh, Ted, which I think what happened was that you were not, you, you came in a little late. So um, we'll look at the minutes in the um, this third paragraph. When they talk about my report, I, I wanted in the minutes that I did thank Walter Andrew for all the work he'd done. Mm. And, and the leading of the commission all these years mm -hmm. and that should be part of the minutes okay i i made the change that you asked for noting that this harbor something bill oh, the address right on on uh, belmont rather than elizabeth yes and did the, the one thing i could do i haven't done is actually put the titles of all of the projects that Tara went through at the meeting into the minutes. Uh, it's probably worthwhile because if someone's going to read the minutes, they'll have a, a clue as to who, what we actually looked at. I, I, can, uh, I can attach, it's a Word document. So if you want, I can just attach it to the minutes before I post it. Okay. That's, That'll work. Oh, some, that we, I guess more. Yeah. Are we supposed to have a motion to do this to accept the minutes and then make the changes? Or what does that work? How does that work? Um, you can make a motion to approve the minutes with the edits. Yes. With the edits. Mm -hmm. Somebody want to make that motion or is that the, I'll make I don't that motion? I, I approve the minutes as presented with the edits that have been approved just now. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. So that takes care of Aye. that part. The, the the next thing on the agenda is the public comments. Um, Tara, do we have anybody in the public? We do. Um, oh. I move to open to the public. Ah, okay. Second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Tara, please open the minutes, the meeting to the public. Sure. Let us know who's out there. Okay. Um, Maria, are you, uh, are you on your phone? No, you're here. I see you. Okay. So the call in user 732991. Who is that? Ed. Uh, oh, Ed. Oh, it's Ed. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ed. Okay. <laughs> Um, the next person we have it is doesn't mean he doesn't want to have a comment. <laughs> <laughs> he gets to stay, he's on all the time. So, right. <laughs> um, the next person we have is Eric Dutoud. Eric, oops, yes, up. Oh. Um, okay. you're on. I think I'm finishing. Yes. Yeah, good evening. Uh, thank you. I, I think I introduced myself like two weeks ago. Uh, so I had a question tonight for the commission. So in your like 2022 objectives, you're looking to work on like a rain garden map uh, of the township. And uh, I would like to be known that uh, I would be like available to volunteer on that project. So uh, I don't know if it's the, the type of approach that, that you want. Uh, um, I don't know if you will be um, interested uh, and, and if you are, how it could work, uh, for example. Oh, great. That's very yeah, nice. I think we had some uh, rain garden project, no, from the funding. Uh, well, this is to do a map of the rain gardens that are already existing oh. in the town. Yeah, I think with a, a, com a commission member as a leader, we'd be very happy to have a volunteer. Help sure. with that. It's a big township. 
a lot of a lot of areas to cover. Let I know me, um, Freddie wanted to put one in. I don't know whether he ever did. Let me, Eric, I will, if you don't mind, um, in the chat, I don't know if you can, or if not, I can, you know, in the chat, if you're able, send me your email address and I will, uh, see, I'll talk to it and see exactly like how we can, if there's, cause you know, before it was, we weren't sure exactly where everything went is, but I'll at least give them the heads up and then maybe you and I can talk about the approach, you know, that you're thinking about. Great, that would be perfect. I just posted my email, so it's my last name at gmail.com. Uh, Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, once again, just like feel free to contact me anytime on this topic. I would be really happy to help. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, very nice. All right, thank you. Um, and then we have uh, Bill Bowman is here. Hi, Bill. Hello, everybody. I have nothing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And that is it for uh, public comment. Uh, so, we, so we need a motion to close the uh, public comment. Uh, I move to close the comment period. Public comment. Second. Okay. okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any nays? No. Okay. Cl that closes that part. Correspondence, um, website, email, social media. Right. So. Um, We've got uh, nothing new, really. Uh, definitely not anything new from the last uh, the last meeting. Um, just some emails forwarded from our internal uh, EC members. Um, so nothing nothing new and exciting. Um, from a social media perspective, I was thinking, and and you can tell me if you don't like this idea. But I was thinking about, you know, it's snowy season. People are using a lot of salt. Are there some uh, maybe less harmful uh, snow melt methods we could be or grip grip methods we could be um, voting indicating out there to the rest of uh, the town instead yes, of uh, very to nice uh, email from Sustainable Princeton. Um, um... Robin, you, you are on the list too, right? What, yeah. what, what were the methods they were recommending? Let's see if I can find their email. Keep talking. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I think uh, just like we asked the other day to, for permission to take the text from Sustainable Princeton Mail and we just posted on, on the media, I mean, we can do the same. Uh, but I totally agree that, uh, that it's too much, you know, and also uh, what is the reason why Last year, um, the pH went down of the water uh, at the end of winter, and uh, apparently, the Department of Public Works uh, were very suggestive that it was uh, because of um, of of the salt. So, off, yeah. Chemically, I don't know how that would happen. I do. Do I? All right, is neutral. <laughs> But the DPW somehow knows, right? <laughs> Which means maybe they had an accident and. Uh... <laughs> so but this was less in reference to the um, drinking water and more in reference. No, I know, I know, uh, but it's all connected. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. There, there was a reference in the, in the letter that indicated that. I remember a while back, and this is a long time ago, um, when I worked at the Water Supply Authority, they were working on some type of, it was something to do with making sure you only, you know, salted or used brine when it was actually like really necessary. And they were trying to develop something. I, you know, I'll look it up and see if where it went after that. But it was part of, Ted, you might remember this. I forget now. I got to look up the details. I'll see if I can find what it was about. I know there's some cleaner salts made from beets that have been used, like beet sugar and things like that. But I also know just sometimes just some sand and a little bit of grit can can be more than enough um, to give you enough traction to do what you need to do. So I, you know, those are the only things I know about. I don't know if anybody else has any, you know, other than going out with the like blowtorch weeder that we have. Uh, <laughs> Um, which I don't recommend. Jessica, I'm talking about for home, home based uh, approaches. Is that what you're looking for for the social media? Not necessarily home based, just 
um, and, and not necessarily endorsing any specific products, um, cause we want to steer, steer clear of that, but just what are some alternative methods than just going and getting your, your giant yeah. bag of salt from, you know, Home Depot and dumping it all over your driveway and your walkway. <laughs> It, it, it's a question for the for us to ask the DPW to ask if they've researched anything because the biggest amount is what's used on our roads, um, sidewalks. Yes, but the roads are the big thing. So maybe the DPW, they've done research to see if there's other products to be that can be used alternatives. There's a lot on, on the web on the internet. They mentioned coffee grounds, sugar beet juice, vinegar. Uh, well, yeah. I've heard vinegar. I've heard uh, the sugar beet juice. I've tried. If it's extremely cold, it doesn't necessarily work. Um, but maybe a combination of that. But the vinegar, vinegar would vinegar. be quite corrosive. Vinegar would yeah. certainly lower the pH yes. of creams. Uh, yeah. They may use calcium chloride. That also, I think, might lower the pH Correct. because calcium is a Calcium hydroxide is weakly ionized. Yeah. Um, so maybe so I, a poor suggestion then for a social media post. Jessica, one of the things before I forget, I think of, you know, uh, things like straws from leftover Halloween decor could be the best uh, environmental choice rather than sand. Wood chips just on your driveway. It, it actually uh, prevents snow from actually sticking down to your concrete or your pavement. That's one good alternative. So mm -hmm. you know, that is, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mess cleaning it later, but I, just... I do. I have found the sustainable Princeton piece. I can send you that link, Jessica. Okay. Send it, send it to Tara and copy me because if it's going to the, it's got to go through Tara anyway. Sorry, Tara. I'll I'll do that right now. Buy you a bottle of wine, Tara. <laughs> that's fine. That's the. That's what I'm here for. Oh. Okay. Okay. In your way. Yeah, and what we really should have make contact with the DPW and see what they're doing at this point. That's not hard to do. It's probably on the, on the call. I was more thinking just from a social media perspective, it really needs to be timely and relevant to the minutes. Right? So that, that was my thought was, you know, what are people thinking about today? Right? So. Yeah, if, if, if we get a good answer, we could put it on the, you know, on the website. That's, that's what. That's what that's on, on, you know, on the yeah. Facebook page. Yeah. yeah. That's, what we call down here a green tip. Yeah, exactly. It's for for the residents. It's not for DPW. Right. Exactly. That's okay. All. Okay. So that's what we have for correspondence then in in website social media. So then we're up to um, the site plans, um, and I know uh, Tara's got got two that she uh, has done the write ups. Those are very ex extensive. I went through that one. It's 13 pages. Yeah. You do a lot so, of work you know, it stuff. includes mapping and everything. I yes. put some maps in there too, but I'll share it on my screen if that's okay with everyone and we can go yes. through it. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I, th I think what we have to do, Tara, is make sure we send the comment section to C Christine Woodbury after we go through the discussion. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. So and I'll. By the I'll, way, I did find there's another new one on the zoning board. I know. Another warehouse. Yeah, we're going to have to go through that one at the next meeting if that's okay, yes. unless we you want to. It's not going to be heard till March. Okay. So but, th this one in front of us is Live Devco LLC. Yes. It's before the zoning board for the March 3rd hearing. Um, what they are proposing is a new six, it's going to be a 12,500 square feet that are existing to be demolished. And the new building is going to be 16,281 total square feet. They need a D variance, which is the use variance, um, in addition to preliminary and site and final site plan approval. Basically, the plan is all the existing structures on site, including the pavement, are going to be removed. It's a current office use. That office is going to be replaced with a three story, 16,281 square foot apartment building. It has zero foot zero setback from Hamilton Street. So that's just something to keep in mind. 15 apartments are proposed within the building plus a parking lot that will have access off Hawthorne Drive, not Hamilton. And that's 28 parking spaces. 
the reason for the D variance, which is the use variance, is because in this zone, the first floor is supposed to be re um, retail, um, you know, commercial use. And in this instance, they're actually looking to make that bottom floor a residential apartment. So that's the reason for the use variance. Um, I'll get through to the plan quickly, but basically I went through everything was submitted that was supposed to be submitted. Um, it is not a brownfield site, but it is considered redevelopment because of its location and also because um, they are using all of the footprint of what's currently built. Um, it is surrounded by sidewalks. It's very accessible. Uh, what else can I tell you? Um, they are proposing bike storage in the parking lot, which is good. Um, they do have a plan for minimizing site disturbance during construction and soil and sedimentation. Um, they are planting 54 trees. Uh, all the proposed outdoor lighting is LED and is within the allowable limits of the ordinance. Um, what else can I tell you? That's that's how charging stations. The charging stations. The char yes. So, okay. So, one interesting thing. So, the charging station. So, the calculation requires that four charging stations be put in. Uh, zero are proposed. So, that's something we're going to have to definitely put in our comments that they are required to have four. Um, they're going to use the existing utility lines that are on Hamilton Street. One interesting thing I did notice is I saw that they have one solar panel that they are putting on a decorative light. <laughs> Um, I didn't see any more than that one, and I really looked. So <laughs> I think they have one small solar panel on a decorative light. So, you know, if they can do it on one decorative light, maybe they can do it on more than that. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. So the comments after going through everything, basically I, I had brought up about the solar panel. You know, there should be more such lighting if they can do that, especially along the sidewalk areas. Um, they are proposing a roof leader system, which will drain into an underground dry well. Um, and that's a fine stormwater management system because in this instance, um, they are not considered a major development. So they don't need to do the major development requirements. However, if they are proposing this roof leader system, one of the recommendations we could have is, you know, disconnecting that or at least putting a filter through it into a rain garden or a rain barrel or a cistern. Um, there's no uh, pervious pavement proposed in the parking lot at all. So maybe we could propose some pervious pavement. Um, there's no rain garden or any type of vegetative rain, uh, a stormwater treatment landscaping. It's not required, but again, maybe we could uh, recommend that. And then um, with the bike storage, I always like to put this comment in that there should be some type of bike, a simple bike repair station with it because they're not expensive and it really does help with people using bikes because they feel like if something goes wrong, they have a way to at least patch a tire or something. And then the EV charging stations I told you about, according to my calculation, four would be needed. Um, and so they have zero proposed, so they would need to do two, one, and one. And this is the, the site plan they submitted is very, you know, not the best, but let's see here. So let me zoom. So, oh, go ahead. Or was that me? I might have heard feedback on me. Um, uh, so again, it's they're they're taking down everything that's on the site as is, and they're putting up the one office building that's going to have residential on the bottom instead of retail, which is what the zone requires, and then the residential apartments above, fifteen apartments altogether, twenty-eight parking spaces, zero setbacks from Hamilton Street. Uh, can I make a comment very quickly when I was reading on you know page number two of I sorry point two on site development. I'm looking at trees, say, I'm going to plant 54 trees, but when I look at the next point under trees, they say no to indigenous species. Didn't we, in one of the meetings, recommend that we recommend native trees to Jersey to be planted in sites? Or am yes. I just making We did. We absolutely did. So, yeah, that could be a comment as well, is that the trees, you know, we recommend using non, uh, you know, non-invasive native species. We can add that to the comments. Yeah, okay. It's a worthy one. Yeah, that's that's what that's that's a good put. And can we, that, can we say anything about it. consider community solar on the roof? 
Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> there, there won't be a lot of common areas that they could light up, but there'd be some. Yeah. Well, if they put in community solar and it generates you know, more than the building can use, other people could use it. But yeah. that, And there's a grant available to, toward that. We've been putting that on some of the warehouse um, applications. So this, this could be a good place to put it in as well. Right. That's a good point. Um, and then just the mapping that I put together, this is just an aerial of it, just so you all know like where, what we're looking at. What we're looking at here. So this is Hawthorne, Hawthorne over here, and this is Hamilton Street. Um, so this is, see. by the way, near our stream cleanup uh, area. This April oh. mile run. Perfect. Yeah. Um, uh, I did really? like a high level look at wetlands and threatened and endangered species. So there's none. These are the two lots. There's none from. Um, basically looking at like from 50 feet up so we can do like the 100 foot radius basically nothing no wetlands or threatened and endangered species i think that i think they have a flat roof if i remember right that that could be a good solar site yeah so that's so, it for this one unless i added the comments from e oops easy and um robin about the community solar and the native planting so i added that in to the okay. other comments okay. does anyone okay. have any other comments yeah. <laughs> thanks tara thanks. all right Thank you, tara. no problem that's that one then we have just one other <clears throat> excuse me which is the harbor group um this is before the planning board at their march 2nd meeting um, they are doing a lot line adjustment between two of their existing lots so they can reconfigure that. Um, and they are also getting looking for preliminary and final site plan approval. There's an existing one story 50,262 square foot warehouse on lot 19.31, which is going to stay and all the other improvements are going to be removed. They then want to build a new. 153,000 square foot warehouse on the newly re reconfigured lot, which will be 19.32. And that's going to have 31 loading spaces and 93 new parking spaces. Um, they're going to use the existing driveway to access the parking lot. And they're also going to put a new driveway in that's going to lead to the new parking area, which is to the west of the building. Um, what else? Stormwater piping is going to be reconfigured. However, because of the negligible net increase to stormwater to, um, I'm sorry, impervious cover, they don't meet the requirements for major projects. So they don't need to, you know, a hundred thousand square feet doesn't re require. So basically that? because they're removing the existing improvements that are around that are in the area, um, they're going to be getting rid of that. And what are the existing improvements so that are there? An increase of 400, of 50,000 oh, feet in buildings. And I guess they were replacing parking with the Right. Buildings. Yeah, there is definitely an increase. Let me skip down here to the um, site plan just so you can see what I'm talking about. So, and I can bring up the demolition plan too. Um, but they are. And I also think that this might have something to do with the, uh, I have to look at the stormwater rules in like greater detail. I don't think this is required, but because of the lot line adjustment, I'm wondering if that has something to do with, oops, I don't know why I keep doing that. I'm sorry. Um, the total impert, like how the impervious is calculated, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Well, maybe we could ask the township staff to just. Look at the scrutinize that carefully. Yeah, we'll definitely have them look at it. Let me just go through and just see if there was anything uh, major of note. I feel like there was with the EV I would parking. Make a general comment that they should be asked why so much parking for a warehouse building that it's they want. the reverse, right? The employee parking is small and more room for trucks. Maybe they want to build more charging so stations. Behind. <laughs> right, yeah, maybe that's. You look at the site plan, you can see all the loading on the back side of the building. <clears throat> uh, they are they're adding a hundred and they're adding net uh, fifty thousand square feet. 
but the the construction that they're putting up is 150,000 square feet. So yeah, but if they're, what, if they're what do you use for the calculation of the EV chargers? The total size of the new building? New, the total new, uh, the total new parking spaces. Yeah, oh, okay. So yes, why, it, why, why 98 parking spaces wouldn't only 31 trucks? Are I they don't gonna know, have... but that is, yeah, that's a good question we can ask. Oh, part, part of it was a pumping station or something. Ordinary vehicles, it's not the, the truck uh, spaces that are an issue. Which... Right, right. If there's 31 truck spaces, more or less, is what you said, but 90 some 93 passenger car spaces. It sounds like it was planning to be a big office. But it's warehouse space, right? That is a good point. Yeah, that can be in our comments as we should ask them why do you need this many parking spaces? That's a very good point. And maybe suggest oh, to put some trees in the ordinance. Parking. Right. Um, yeah. in terms of trees, 54 are being removed, 74 are required for replacement, and that is what they're proposing. All the proposed outdoor lighting is um LED and within the allowable limits. No pervious pavement is proposed. Um, so that was another interesting thing. No pervious pavement is being proposed on this one. Uh, yeah, because they're, they're not they're not increasing the impervious uh, that they had before. Right. The so the, uh, the footprint will. You know the footprint's gotten bigger. They're taking down a hundred thousand square feet in putting out 150,000 square feet. So their right. footprint has gotten bigger, which okay. should increase their impervious coverage. Right, but I believe they're removing, I think they're removing a lot of paved area with ah, where the right. net, it's the yep. net increase is not, yeah. you know, doesn't meet it, which I, yeah, I get it. Um, the whole thing, uh, Tara, I'd suggest showing the, when you send the, attachment to us showing the before uh, condition, right. what is the present state of the uh, property? Yeah, it's that, often absolutely. that's a good point. Yeah, I'll for next time for something like that. I'll absolutely do that, especially in this it's kind of situation. Where we, we need that information. Or yeah, the, I can bring that up too. Um, Tara, in your in your comments, add that the tree should be native species. Okay, I'll add that. This is the existing site as it is, um, aerial, and then here's just what the wetlands. Just so you see, there's there's no wetlands on the actual site itself, close to it, but it does look as if everything else is parking lot. Yeah. 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 Is it possible for them to bank some of those parking spaces or at least use pervious uh, pavement for the parking spaces since they have so many? That was one of the comments I made was that they should be using pervious pavement. I think probably they feel, oh, we don't have to, but I mean, really, this is a lot. And they should. If they're, well, it really comes down to are they repaving any area or are they? Just using existing pavement. Right there, my understanding, I'll have to go, you know, I'm going to have to pull that up, but my understanding was that they are removing the existing concrete and paint and uh, asphalt and putting down new for their parking spaces. This previous pavement recommended for parking areas and interior driveway. That's a recommendation. Yeah, since they're removing old pavement, they should consider at least portion of it to be pervious. Right, yeah. right. Agree. Okay, so I have native species for planting and landscaping. It should be, and we want to ask them about the amount of parking spaces. That, that was part of it. Did we uh, consider a home roof at all? I mean, is it does it lend itself to that? Under the new Walter, does it... Walter, Walter had a comment. Yes, see what Walter has to say. Go ahead, Walter. No, no, I was saying, did we talk about uh, the possibility of green roof here at this uh, the new new building? 
I have that on my comments here, oh, which do. I now have up on the page. So that was just my cut. The first one I have is here: coal roof or green roof should be included. right, right there. Oh, okay. Good. Um, again, the per pervious I'm pavement. Okay. Um, and I think Maria, you had mentioned the pervious pavement should also be on the interior driveway. So I have that too. Um, the EV charging stations, fourteen are required, and they have zero proposed. Um. Wow. Bike storage, I had put there that should be there to promote biking. But even as I was writing it, I was like, I'm not sure if that really makes a lot of sense. I mean, I know they have a lot of parking, but how many people are going to be visiting there? But that's yeah. why we need info on the parking. Maybe when they find out how many um, EV stations they need, they'll reduce the amount of parking spaces. Probably, <laughs> probably. That's what I was saying sarcastically, you know. The the only other reason could be that they're adding more office staff. I mean, I don't know what they do in that place, but you know, it's that's the only other reason. Or an or other office yeah, going to be office, there? Did you no, know, no. Tara? I'm sorry, Maria. Go ahead. Is it going to be another warehouse, or is it going to be a, a building for offices? It's warehouse. a warehouse. It's a warehouse. warehouse. Yeah. Okay, so then the bike might storage might be make sense a little, yeah, because we don't know if all. All employees will come in car or some will come in bike. I don't, we don't know. Right. So, no, you're right. And uh, Tara. And immigrants working in warehouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Robin. A uh, question about the, isn't it a new law yet? Maybe it's not enacted that warehouses have to be solar ready. Yeah, I think, no. I think it is law now. And so we need to make sure that these, that this roof is solar ready. Okay. I will get that information the warehouse. Okay. And maybe we should right. add that question to our, to our template. The yeah. question here now Definitely. that it's law in the state. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. It's, there's no more comment. Uh, Tara, I wanted to mention two more um, things that are coming up in the, in the building plans, but one, one we did already, but I don't think we, our comments have gotten to uh, Christine it's coming up uh, next week with the planning board that JWH uh, real estate at 1100 Randolph. That's the one we discussed a couple couple meetings ago. Yes, I sent that in. I sent oh, you did. Memo. Okay, yep. mm -hmm. good. And um, besides the Harbor Group, there's a Franklin storage coming up in March. Another self storage on. Um, David, oh, I don't think it's David's name. That's where the, it's, this is on, um, I'm not sure where it was, but it's on the March 16th meeting of the planning board, Franklin storage, self storage. Oh, this one is on Davidson. It's on Davidson, one, one lot in from Pierce. Mm. And I looked at that the other day, I drove by and it is a big, it's a big deep lot. And there is some wetlands, I think in the back. It, there's a big slope there also. Oh, geez. Okay. So we want to catch that one. That, that, that's a new one. There was an artist uh, rendering also. And then um, the other one that, sh that just showed up, I saw it on the zoning board. L'Oreal is going to um, double the size of their place. They're planning. Oh, my goodness. They're going to add 284,000 square feet to what they already have. That's on commerce oh, is where they are. So um, there's 25 acres there, and they're existing. Uh, they do cite how much um, impervious coverage is 60 percent. It's 63 percent, so it's three percent over. But this is something we can really go in detail after you've looked at it, Tara. But I just wanted to alert everybody that that's 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 a major expansion. Yeah, absolutely. Next to uh, the L'Oreal building is uh, yes. a detention basin or something. Uh, there is to talk about that. Yeah, bio yeah. detection. They're also uh, recommending a forest pavement in lots of the areas around it. And they're taking down a lot of trees. Yeah, that's where well, they'll be expanding. There's trees between them and the, the houses on Gary Court. Right. Who will be out. <laughs> I think there's a thousand trees they're taking down. If I'm not mistaken, they okay. have a manufacturing facility there, is it? Yeah, I think so. It's big enough, sure. Yeah, yeah. 
I just uh, I just want to let you guys know too, uh, real quick. I went I looked right now at the stormwater management report. That's for this application we're looking at, and their engineer does certify that they are actually not increasing the impervious coverage at all. So when I look at the site plan, I'm going to share it. I have the demolition plan up just so you can see it. Um, this is the demolition plan of that. So they are removing. There's like three. See, there's three buildings okay. on the, and they're removing that. And some of the pavement parking. and the parking. So when they put it in, it actually is it uh, not a net increase. Is this the Belkin Road project or? This is the uh, Bel it's Belmont Ave. This is on Belmont. It's yeah. behind the shop right in the fire. It's by it's by the firehouse. That's yeah. that Belmont crosses uh, behind the firehouse there. So yeah, so that's. That's that, but even still, they're they're not proposing any pervious pavement or anything like that, which could be a good addition. So, yeah. Yeah. all right. So then, if there's no other comments, I'll get those into Christine. Okay, good. That'll that'll be good. Yeah, she she had asked about the Devco one because that's coming up yeah. soon. Yeah, so. I'll get her those. Okay. So we've done that. Now we're up to a uh, new business. And that's the community energy plan grants. That was part of the the BPO seminar. I had the had had this from Anjek. Mm -hmm. Yep. I downloaded. And so, uh, yeah, at the last few meetings, we've kind of been talking about should we do this community energy grant energy plan grant, and what it basically is is it um, is funding from the Office of Clean Energy that provide it'll provide funding for a consultant to do a community energy plan and that community energy plan will let you uh, I'm just gonna put the one pager up here it basically um, looks at the greenhouse gas commission uh, gas emissions being produced um, it looks at sustainable energy uh, initiatives that can be done your existing energy supply it looks at resiliency um, overburdened municipalities are eligible for up to $25,000 grants and other municipalities that are not considered overburdened under the um, Environmental Justice Act can get 10,000. So we are considered an overburdened municipality. So we would be able to get the 25,000. The one, so I've, I've been looking through it. And I know the last few meetings we've been talking about, should we do it? Shouldn't we do it? Um, I think, yes, my opinion is this, the following. I think we should do it. Yes, that is my original opinion. However, I don't, I don't know that we're in the spot right now to go ahead and do it only because of our other projects that we have on the, on our plate. And because it is a very intensive application process and project. So there's a lot of reporting with it. There is a lot of information, obviously, that has to go into it and a lot of work that has to go into getting the grant because our sustainable Jersey recertification is due this year and it has to be done. That's that's one thing that we must do. Um, I feel like there was something else that we must do. I think just based on that and our other work, I don't know that we'll, we'd be able to like pull it off this year. And I, I, you know, maybe we can do it next year. That would be my thought but you know totally open obviously and and depends on what you all want to do Tara what what were you dead. I was going to ask Tara what are you what are you going to intend to have Justin work on is that come into this or would that be separate a different well, different so project Justin is working as we speak on the sustainable jersey recertification and kind of organizing yeah. what we okay. have and figuring out what we need to do that's a very big process that requires coordination with all of our departments, writing narratives for every uh, um, action, gathering the documents to submit. So that's very intensive and we have to submit that by the end of June, I believe. So he's working on that. And he's also any like tasks that, uh, you know, result from these meetings, he's been helping me with those, which he's been super helpful. Um, he's also helping me with the mayor's Monarch Butterfly Pledge. So he's been busy, but, um. I mean, yeah, Justin, I'm sure could help us with this, but it is a long term project and it requires a lot of. Um, you know, correspondence with the state, with the consultant, with the town departments, and I think it's just a lot right now. You wouldn't think that even 25,000 would get you very far with the consultant. Either. 
I mean, I think it basically goes all to the consultant. That's what my guess yeah. would be, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, so, so this is Ed. Um, I highly recommend that we do it. I understand what you're saying about capacity, but I do think it's important for the town to have a plan for itself and to understand its impact writ large to sort of prioritize what we're doing and the kind of investments we're making. And, you know, as the liaison from council, I think it would guide a lot of what's happening in the municipality. Things mm -hmm. like, you know, earlier in the conversation about like the vehicles that we have, you know, if we don't know with a greenhouse gas inventory, what the biggest contributors are from the municipal standpoint, it's hard to really push in the budget where, you know, kind of our values are measured by how we're spending our money by not knowing what the priorities are to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. Like, you know, so I, I, I understand the capacity. I wonder if like any consultants that might be able to receive the money, if we got it could help with the writing um, or, you know, if there's anyone on the committee that could help you just knowing how much is, is going on on the commission, it, it just seems like a, a good amount of money and it probably would be very informative Mm -hmm. for the actions that we could take and maybe rules we could change, you know, regulations, knowing what the, you know, total contribution is. Is it from trucks, you know, uh, meaning, you know, from the warehouses, then we could, you know, Im implement strategies around that or push certain sorts of things. So without a plan, it makes everything feel sort of haphazard. Right. I do. I agree with you on that 100%. Yeah. And, you know, I have doubts that there's very much more we can do since we have been fairly uh, forward looking and having solar cells on the municipal building. Perhaps we could put solar cells on other buildings. Uh, but this is a community plan. This is not just uh, for municipal structures. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much more Correct. we can do. In this connection, I, I want to mention, and Ed probably knows about this also, the mayor had called me and said that there's a petition up demanding that the township adopt uh, a energy aggregation plan uh, with regular increases in the percentage of uh, renewable energy in the plan. And his concern was that there's no um, protection in what the petition asked for uh, against rapidly increasing prices for uh, a plan with an increasing amount of renewable energy. But all I know about it is, as I say, a phone call from the mayor. Ed, do you know more about this? I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, I think we've talked to the folks who have made or submitted the petition to get some more time to involve the Environmental Commission and the community in a larger way to make sure that, you know, if we go forward with energy aggregation, that we're taking into consideration all the factors, you know, not just uh, how much clean energy we get, but what the cost is and the burden could be to families and just, you know, knowing before we go headlong into it. Um, and one of the things in that discussion came up is, you know, how important a priority is energy aggregation as a strategy um, versus other things that we could be doing to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the town. And then we realized, well, at least I did, that we don't really have a plan or um, an assessment of where our biggest bang for the buck is, as they say. Um, that's kind of what this community energy plan grant kind of, you know, allows for, and that would help us to shape whatever happens in the energy aggregation um, effort or other kinds of things that we might do. Um, you know, I just, from that perspective, it's always helpful to know um, I, I know Woodbridge did it a number of years ago, um, and it was really informative for the policies that they implemented. And it wasn't just for the municipality, um, also for uh, homeowners. Um, there's all kinds of things folks can do, like 
we can actually do a special assessment on energy uh, for every homeowner, and we can use that to create a special fund, which gets grants out. There's, there's just a lot available, but the question is, what would have the biggest impact? And without a plan, without That's something great. that does an assessment, it's hard to know. Yeah. And, and realizing how beneficial it could be the t to the town, if we were to try to pursue this now, do you think the town could help us do this work? If, if we have an intern who's already highly, um, not allocated. Charged, <laughs> yeah, highly allocated, we have a consultant that we can only access yeah. 10 hours yeah. a month. You know, if they could free up a little more resource, I'd be happy to work on a project like this, maybe one other person from the commission. I can, one of the benefits I could see of having the data is I do think eventually Washington's going to pass the climate change portions of the Build Back Better bill. I think the social stuff they're going to leave on the table. And if that, some of that money starts to get allocated through different buckets, if we have data, we could be you know, closer to the top of the list to allocate some of those buckets of money. Um, maybe I'm just being a Pollyanna, but those are my thoughts. No, I think I think that's exactly right. There's a whole myriad. Uh, let me check. I don't know what that exactly takes, but but basically, given the limited number of hours that we have for the commission de dedicated for uh, Tara's time, is there a way to expand that? And maybe that would take a motion by council or something else to allow for us to apply. Um, Tara, if you want to just let me know how many hours you think it would be, mm -hmm. I can definitely do some legwork around that. And, and yeah, sure. if you have enough time in the day, do you want to do this kind of project, or is this this would would this would this be the last straw for you? Oh no! <laughs> I mean, I always you know I, that's why I'm here. I you know I love working with you guys. I just want to make sure I'm able to do the other things too that have to be done. So yeah, I mean, if there's even if there's a way that I can figure out how, I mean, I'll talk to Mark Healy of course too, the township planner, and he should definitely be involved. Um, maybe there's a way we can you know, divide some of that work. So it's not, you know, I'm, I'm sure if, if you all want to do it, like, we'll, yeah. make, we'll figure out a way. And maybe um, we can get an intern from Rutgers, maybe get a grad student. I mean, they, yeah, they've yeah. been asked about, please oh. remember us. We're here. We want to, we'd like to see our students get this experience. Absolutely. Uh, well, I should go ahead. Go back to the sustainable Jersey. Uh, certification preparation, which after all, I've really done for all of the preceding ones. Though I was <laughs> relieved not to have to be the only <laughs> You can't escape your past, Ted. <laughs> well, and I would help you too, of course. So it's due, this grant is due March 18th. Right, you got a month, we Wait, still a month and a half. Yeah. I attended the webinar just in case we wanted to do it. So I have all the information. It's really a matter of putting it together and getting a resolution before the council, which isn't, it's not, you know, ridiculous. So we can, we definitely can do that. If I start working on it, you know, pretty soon. Do, do we need a motion to approve this or can we just say the, the commission wants to go ahead? I think we need the township's approval first. Okay. Are we going to get the help? Oh, Can I, we free up some more help? I think we have to get going on it. You know, if if the deadline is the 18th, I think we have to get going on it without waiting for a township approval. The township mm -hmm. will approve it if we have a proposal ready to go. I think well, and what I what I could do is if you all want to make a say you want to make a recommendation that we apply for the grant for it, then I can start preparing it and I can meet with Bob Warnlocker um, and anyone else to go over it and then get it before the council. Okay. I think that's a plan. Yes. Yeah. Okay, one other observation, uh, you know, we're sort of thinking outside the box about how we can get the resources to move this thing forward. And I, I, I don't know if anything exists such as, let's say, um, some other town, not necessarily Princeton, but Manville or what have you wanted to sort of do the same thing that we might share 
a consultant or some resources such that we would, you know, they would do the same thing twice, hopefully, and uh, it will cost us less and we could move much faster. I don't know if that type of thing has ever been done. But uh, maybe, let's, maybe with Hillsborough? Maybe yeah. Hillsborough would be probably more ideal. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. we're both in the same county, so that might yeah. help us understand how the county mixes yeah. into all of this. I don't know how I, you I would check it to together see if like that. They allow. Pardon? Yeah, if they allow for that, you know, it's a government ap application for a grant. Like they may not allow for multiple towns to get together. Mm -hmm. we we'll have to check. I don't know. I'll have to look up and see. Um, Who's the? Um, do they know who the sustainability person is in in Hillsborough? Yeah. David goes. Remember his name. We had some correspondence there. I, I think I might have it. Let's give me a minute. Let's see I think I it's Dave Coy. That's what I just said. K O I S. K O I S. K O I N. K O I S. Oh, K A O I N. Cool. Okay. I'm going to try and contact him just to see if they're doing after this informally. Just so we know where we are. It might well be. Yeah. It wouldn't, 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 wouldn't hurt to make contact with him anyway. Yeah. I mean, we do share a river in the canal. <laughs> right. Tara, I have a quick question. I'm looking at the application padded uh, on page A. Is an appendix which talks about overburden municipalities. I don't see us listed. Am I just missing it? Um, yeah. Let's see here. So the overburden municipalities, the most recent um, list is on the, the Equity Act website. I can send that to you, and we are on there. So it might just, I'm looking at the same thing you are. Um, I think this might just be outdated. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wondered if we qualified, but if you've got it on another list, I think we're okay. Yeah. I'm looking. Tara, at I'm happy to help in case we move ahead, and I'm happy to help. Oh, thank oh. you, Lizzie. Oh, good. I mean, in the grant application package, they have a sample resolution, so that's easy enough to, to work on. Ah, um, okay. I'm just looking at what else there, you know, it's, it's nothing, you know, we, we could do it. We definitely could put the application together. I, I mean, I, you know, I love putting together plans for sure. This is like, I, you know, so I'm happy to help out with it. We need a budget. It looks like a work plan template. Um, we need the resolution. What else? Where, where do we get a list of the available consultants that can, that would be worthy of doing this um it's 25 grand once you get the application i guess they send you a list of consultants there it is also on the website but i think they'll send you a list of like recommended consultants that you can work with and uh, okay but yeah. how do we come up with a budget for a consultant to put in the application if we haven't had the list yet i will have to look well no we have the list it's on the website i just have to get it from there um but i wonder if there's consultants that work like more in our area versus those that don't right um so i'll look i'll look there's one there's one in new brunswick um it's uh called greener by design oh yes i know them let's uh check uh feinberg yeah, Chuck Feinberg is there, Adam something or other. Adam um, Zellner, I think. Zellner, yeah, that's what it is, yeah. Yeah, we can uh, contact them for sure. Because that all cuts down travel time, which is billable. Yeah. All right, so if, if you all think this is worth, what did they yeah. say? We would probably have to put it out for bids from consultants. Well, if you're working from a state approved list, I don't know if you need to. Well, I think that's something to inquire about. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to yeah. Find out. I mean, I remember I was on a state contract for electrical supplies for four years. And once they knew I was certified, 
I was getting jobs around the state because I was on the list. So they didn't, you know, they they knew where they wanted to be price wise, but I don't know that they went. To, the state did the competitive bidding, and that's who that's who got listed as suppliers. Yeah. Okay. So, very good. I think that's that's a good discussion. All right. So just to be clear, I'm going to start putting together this application. Yes. Okay. I just want to be 100 percent sure. Okay. And do you need and do you need me to talk to Bob about increasing your hours? Um, I, I, I I haven't talked to him yet about this project because I was waiting for the okay from the Environmental Commission. So I'll talk to him first and see. Okay. You know, get his thoughts, but then, and then, you know, I'm sure maybe we can all talk to him together, but yeah, let me, I haven't even had, you know, run it by him yet. So now that I know we're going to proceed, okay. I'll set up a time with him. Yeah, I, and I think you could be big help to us on this one. Happy to. Good. Awesome. Okay. So I'll start working on it. Okay, good. And we've, we've, we've touched on the second one on new business. The sustainable Jersey recertification. We sort of talked about it in on the side part of this discussion that it's coming up soon. Yeah. Tara, do you and Justin need any input from us on this or? Um, not yet. Justin, do you want to just tell them real quick about what you've been working on? Sure. So I've been doing a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, basically comparing uh, the projects that Franklin Township has done versus what Sustainable Jersey is asking for. And I'm kind of doing like a compare and contrast of like, okay, so Sustainable Jersey is asking um, under certain categories, these different projects, and we have these different projects under that specific category. But I'm just trying to compare and see like what we could do more to qualify for more points, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. just more of like setting that up now. Okay, and I think having a community energy plan would qualify for some points, doesn't it? Yeah, it would. Yeah, it would. Yeah. It de it would needs to be completed before. So for the next certification round, we could get the points for that. But absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, Justin's been doing a great job. He's going through all the. Ted had sent me a bunch of documents. Um, he's been looking through the website, trying to figure out where we are on projects to see if we can get points. So he's getting kind of that in a situation right now where we can then start actually compiling everything. Good. Right. Yeah, That's he's, a been big very help. Busy. he's been very, yeah, yeah doing a lot. <laughs> and if I can do any legwork, let me know. I'd be happy to help. Thank you. Okay. One I, other I thing. Have a question to... for Ted. Uh, Ted, oh. um, I'm sorry, who did I cut off somebody? Oh, no, I just want to say one quick thing just to wrap up with Justin. So he, I had a few years ago taken this green infrastructures champion program at Duke Farms through Rutgers. And they had asked me to come back and just kind of like mentor. So I was able to get Justin in as a student. Um, wow. So he went to one of them and he's going to try and meet. I don't know, Justin, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Maybe you might go to a few more. You're not, maybe yeah. he has time because yeah. he's, you know, in school. But um, he learned a lot, right? Justin, you, you like that class. Yeah, it was very informative. They basically went through like the different types of green infrastructure and they kind of said, all right, this is what's significant. Uh, they talked a lot about rain gardens um, and pervious uh, surfaces. And like, I knew of like the significance of each and kind of the details within them, but like, it was awesome kind of learning like the ins and outs of it. And then they talked about different prices and how to push green infrastructure in municipalities. So it was really cool. Yeah, so he's been doing that too. So he's been a big help already. Thank you, Justin. Very good. He's he's earning his points. He is. He is <laughs> probably more already, but yeah. <laughs> but while we're on the subject of Ted uh, of Sustainable Jersey, uh, I know that the senior center um, they can't occupy the building now because there's significant roof leaking and repair. And I don't know why has solar panels ever been proposed for that or. Or reject it. Uh, it seems that now would be a time uh, to to talk about that. Good point. Yeah, I don't know. I think the thing was that we got um, the the panels on the municipal building are through a county uh, 
program that we didn't have to spend any money on it. We just have to agree to buy the electricity. But that was as much as we could get at the time. And I don't know whether there's uh, opportunity for uh, extending this to other buildings, public works building, for instance, uh, in the senior center and the police building are all possible places. Absolutely, absolutely. If, if, if we do a lease arrangement, like it sounds like you did on the, the municipal building, there's no cash out up front. Yeah. I mean, you pay for the electric and you save about a third of, of what you, you know, I mean, that that's what I have on the house. Yeah. Hmm. A I, lot of companies will do I, that. And I, they're, they're it's a matter of bidding. Sustainable Jersey. This, this is why some towns re recertify every year because you, you get an idea and it may take longer than six months to bring it to fruition. That's a good point. Yeah. Hmm. But you're right. This is the time if you're going to put a solar cells on the roof, doing the roof over is the ideal time to do yeah. solar. Well, I do know that they are currently, they can't occupy the building because of the significant leaks all over. And they are, I don't know whether they're about to begin to repair or they're considering what needs to be done. Who, who's in charge of that? Uh, um, Parks and Recreation. Uh, and I forgot who the um, the leader is. Uh, used to be. Um, Alice. It's Bo, Bo Bertus now. Yeah. Bo Bertus. Um, is it possible it's ice damming? Is it very recent damage? Um, I think there was some old damage that didn't get repaired and the ice exacerbated the problem. They were still in the building because it was in one area sort of out of the uh, traffic area, but now they had to close the building. My mm -hmm. goodness, how did you get to that? Because huh. the recreation department would have an uh, office there, right? Yeah. In every, in every crisis, there's an opportunity. Right. <laughs> okay, we can try and set something up. I can try and talk to Bo and see, um, yeah, like you know what's going on, what the plans are, and if he'd be open to discussing, you know, that which I'm sure he would, of course. Yeah, I mean that's easy to get three bits. Okay. Okay, I can look into that. Let's put that on the agenda for next next. Next time to see if we can help the senior citizen building be a project okay. we take over. Yeah. Presumably what you want to do is ensure that with whatever they do on the roof, that they make the roof ready for solar. Exactly. Yeah. Right. The solar cells themselves would be a separate project. Yeah. Right. You're right. Solar ready. Solar ready. Yeah. Yeah, solar ready is also having connect electrical connections. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll I'll reach out to him. Okay. okay. Tara, let me know what you make out there, so if I can help out with that part of it. Sure. Can, yep. I've got I've got two that I know of, and there's probably a third, because we got the the people that did this the uh, central school. This they they get no. Those cells are almost all up now on the canopy, but they did a lease. They did a sale and lease back. Okay. And um, um, it's got to be one that's willing to do the mid municipalities. Oh, let me see okay. that. It's not falling off. Okay. That's my daughter, let me just call her back. Sure, I can do that. Everyone, I need to do this, but I have to run. Um, I'll call you tonight. Yeah, you go ahead, Paul. Bye. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Oh, there you are. You back. I'm back. Good. I was about to step in, Paul. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, they had a step over it, my daughter. <laughs> uh, okay, so we got so we and so we we really covered the the new business. Um, is there any? Should we move on now to old business? Mm -hmm. We, well, we got to. The Stanford. Adopt the Drain program, I guess, is still working through the township budgeting and everything. I have to get an update for you on that Adopt a Drain. I meant to get one last week and I did not. So I'll have to follow up and get you info on, on where we are with that. I need to get a, a an update. I mentioned that to some, oh, I got a call from somebody here in Canal Walk asking about stormwater and such. And I said, this is one of the things that would would work on that. And you know, I mentioned that she she's writing an article for National Magazine and asked uh -huh. what we were doing on stormwater. And so I mentioned the adaptive drain and the you know okay. rain gardens and all that kind of stuff. I'll get an update for the next meeting and I'll because I'll meet with Bob Bornlocker yeah. before the next okay. meeting anyway. Very good. That that's a quick one. Yep. <laughs> and the green infrastructure strategic plan. Still I, I I need to work on that again too. Yeah. I didn't really okay. do much work on that one in the last week or two. So I'll I'll uh, follow up with, when I have my big meeting with Bob. I'll have like a bunch of stuff for him. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, and then this opens up the thing for any of the commissioners that have additional comments or things they want to bring up. I guess I have a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Um, Stan and I met with Frank Gaffney of the BPU and Kathleen Lewis, the EV expert, um, on last Friday, and they shared a lot of information. And um, I think we should be looking at it. Some of it is pretty time sensitive. Um, one thing that I'll bring up right now is that the Clean Fleets program to uh -huh. the BPU. Uh, has money available, but we need to get our application in by May 2nd. And essentially, we would provide a budget for this coming year that would include perhaps essentially charging stations. And they will provide, because of the size of our town, we could be able to get $4,000 for each for up to seven vehicles, but we already have a bunch of vehicles and up to four level two chargers, and they can be public chargers. Mm -hmm. And um, they will, um, the timing is important. So we would need to put the chargers in this coming year's budget, and then we'd apply for the money now. It is a reimbursement grant. Yeah. And we don't have to put them into place until July of 2023. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to make sure that whatever charges we might want to buy are on the state eligibility list. Yeah. So uh, that is an interesting program that I think maybe Tara should talk to Bob about. It's called <laughs> Add that to your list, Tara. Uh, you know, I have a little list. Yep. Oh, it's growing. <laughs> it's called Clean Fleets. Uh, okay. They also talked about municipalities and streetlights. I know this is something we've talked about a lot. Yeah. And 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 LED bulbs on streetlights. They would not give us a date, but they emphasize the BPU is close to coming out with its program. Other states have allowed municipalities to purchase poles and negotiate rates. Frank will let us know when it, it will re, when it will be released. Sustainable New Jer uh, Jersey is a big part of this mm. program. Yeah, I don't know, Robin remembers, but I was in correspondence with Shiva Kula about that. Yeah. Remember, yes. and I sent letters, and he said, "Oh yeah, you know, he circulated them, but nothing ever happened." Yeah. Well, apparently, it's it's coming. I mean, I I pointed out that the the maintenance was lower, it was cost reductions, and all that kind of stuff, and it just never went further. We talked about the new municipal or uh, multi-unit dwelling program mm -hmm. uh, that provides incentive money for chargers and and make ready, but um, it's for multi-unit dwellings only. And uh, federal, state, and utility money can make up 90% of the investment. So the property owner has to have a little bit of skin in the game, 10%. Um, our role, I think, would be just to promote that if we wanted to do that. And it seems to me that with the tax assessor's list of property owners, we could send out something from the EC 
or you know just encouraging people to check out this BPU program and send them the link. Uh, condo associations, I think, would probably have more incentive than a landlord-owned apartment building. Yes. But um, I, I think our role there might be promotion, so you can give that some thought. The one piece that got me really excited was that PSE and G has a program in effect now, where they pay for the make ready situations for public charging, multi residential charging, and residential charging. Oh, it wow. is not a grant. It is up and running now. The applicant would have to be the owner operator. So it'd have to be the property manager, the residence home. But they talked about shopping centers, malls, even municipal properties. You just need parking spaces. And they'll connect us with PS, the PSE and G contact. Oh, wow. Uh, and of course, we did talk about pole charging, which is, stands appropriately, you know, very strong interest. And they talked about the problems that utilities cannot own and operate chargers. So uh, chargers on poles, someone else would need to own the pole or lease the pole from the util from the utility company. Yeah. Um, and no, uh, 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 Robin, the, the thing is that we need to sign a lease agreement that we can use the polls. Right. And, and BPU the... made a comment that apparently some other states, they had problems uh, creating uh, this lease agreement uh, because of liability insurance or, or right. something. And I think yeah. we should not, we should not take this as a, you know, uh, to deter us from trying because uh, the pole mounted chargers, they represent a very smart and inexpensive way how to implement it's a low hanging fruit because the power is right there. And uh, for those poles that are located near street or on uh, common parking lots, you can always have two uh, parking spots that are adjacent uh, to the location of the utility pole and have, uh, have the charging. And there are various ways how to do the technical uh, implementation. The uh, so if uh, if uh, township makes a lease contract uh, uh, for the utility poles, the township would be the primary applicant to get uh, funding for the charging stations with BPU, and the PSCNG would be paying uh, to put the lines, which would be very cheap for them. They just need to drop the line from top to, to lower. Um, Stan, I agree, right? and I think I think that should be on Tara's list to check with with Bob. However, mm -hmm. having spent forty years in the insurance business, I just want us to be prepared because the town's liability carrier may say, "Sorry, you can't do this; it's not going to be covered." So that would be one of the first places Bob goes. And if if he gets if they don't object, I think we should go full steam ahead. I just want us to be prepared. I know that can be a real stumbling block. Mm -hmm. and maybe, Our, maybe it won't be, but it, it's one of the many things that came up in that conversation that I think is worth exploring. And I just thing, want to tell you that yes. the HOA here at Canal Walk is looking at those grants. Great. We have a committee, and I'm on the committee, but uh, we're, we're looking at that exactly because um, the, the enclave, which is all the multi-story buildings, fits that definition perfectly. Right, and they the the enclave has been doing a lot of research on the on the charges. The last thing I would mention is he said that the BPU is soon opening a grant program for tourism locations, so oh, wow. that would include county and state parks. Oh, so there may be chargers that could come into the town through Colonial Park, and the Delaware Route and Canal Park. Ah. So I think that will be one to watch out for. So. Um, there was a lot of very interesting information there. And Tara, I'll send you my notes. That might help. Perfect. Well, yeah, that would uh, be we'll put our notes together because uh, I'm, um, I, I also made notes. And uh, so, uh, Robin, I'm sorry I didn't do it yet, but um, okay. I'll do it. Yeah. 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 yeah, we'll get them over to Tara and then she can yeah. see what, what their interest there might be. Mm -hmm. through the town township manager's office. One of the requirements that uh, BPU is asking that the charger is networked. 
because they want to have the ability to collect data. Mm. There is a list of approved networks and it's pretty broad um, uh, that um, uh, the BPU uh, is working with. Um, and um, I'm striving to get actually another vendor called Plugzio, uh, which is, uh, you know, kind of startup. They, they are here for a year or two and they provide very inexpensive uh, way. They essentially have a, a, a plug that has networking um, uh, circuit inside. And uh, so people come, they, they scan um, and they can use the plug. They bring their own charging cord. Um, and they can charge their vehicle. It's very practical. It's a low cost. And uh, um, the, the problem with the charge point network, which we use, is that uh, it requires ongoing annual fee. And that is not taken care of by BPU. And I have seen some uh, uh, municipalities actually abandoning uh, this method, and they are actually using regular charger and they use parking uh, fee, like a parking meter, because those are cheaper. And they have a little bit higher parking fee for those spots that have the charging station. And that's how they implement uh, uh, collection um, money for, uh, for charging. So that's just saying that this is alternative and, uh, and some other towns are doing it. Okay. Okay. Um, the other, if we finish with that, the last well, I have one other one sure. comment. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, just my usual ask about the status of the townships motor vehicle idling ordinance. Um, if anything's ah. going on with that, but also, um, on all the warehouse projects that we've been looking at, I would recommend that all of those properties um, be required to put up. Um, the anti idling signs in their parking areas throughout their parking areas. So all of the. The plans that we've reviewed, I think that's a. Comment that we should put on all of them. Arnold, I had a note to do that and I didn't mention it. Maybe Tara, Tara could add that to our template. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I am. Uh, I'm also in the pro. I'm. I'm asking Justin to do some research on these things at the same time. So we'll we'll get it. We'll get them Good. figured out, and we'll talk to Bob. Yep. You could find out if there's any progress on the ordinance, if they're yeah. still working on it, or what's going on with okay. that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have a comment too. Um, the biology biology teacher of Franklin High School. Uh, she emailed me. Uh, she's. She shared some posters that the students, her students prepare uh, to bring awareness to the single use of plastic ban that's coming in May. And also she's inviting the Environmental Commission to the Green Fair on April 8th from 3.30 p.m. until 6 p.m. at the high school. And we'd we'll love to see if some reps from the Environmental Commission We'll be willing to have a table at the event. So I'm forwarding to all of you now that we're in the meeting that uh, email so you'll see the posters that the students prepare. Um, I told it already that I'll be I'll be uh, assisting as a Franklin resident if the commission decides to not have a table. Uh, but if I, but if the commission decides to bring a table to be like a vendor at the event, I would love to also be part of that. I don't know what the decision is going to be. So um, I'm just What's hoping. The again? What's the date, Maria? Uh, April 8th from 3.30 to 6 p.m. So we have a little time to pull something together. Uh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to follow a 3.30 and was my 3.30 to 6 p.m. I'm sorry, I didn't hear where. It's at Franklin High School. Franklin High School, Franklin High School, and they would need from us to have like a table with information. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Commander. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably similar to what we do for Franklin Day. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Just let me find her. Okay. Uh, Thank I you. That I think that's a good idea. I have the banner, uh, yeah. which we and I um, we have a lot of literature for the plastic bag stuff too. Tara, uh, Robert had given me uh, some, and I've still got some of those uh, flyers. 
And Walter has the rest of them now. Okay. Okay. Well, I'd be willing to be on that committee or that table if, if it goes forward. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, I'll be in Florida on the 8th until the uh, 8th to the 15th. I'll be around. I'd be happy to help. All right. Central 8th. Okay. You know, one thing I've thought about with the plastic bag ban is you see people at the supermarket filling up a cart with bag after bag after bag of things they're buying. One re <laughs> reusable bag is not going to be enough for a lot of people. No, no, no. I agree. You know, I a funny, a with funny, uh, take like three. <laughs> I know. This yep. funny uh, thing happened. So the other day I had to take my daughter to Michael's to make, to basically buy $50 worth of supplies to make a receptacle for Valentine's, <laughs> right? So I go to Michael's, have everything. Of course, I was like all disheveled. So I forgot my bags and we get in there and Michael's ran out of bags, right? They didn't do it on purpose. They ran out of bags. So luckily I had my purse, but I had to carry as much as I could put in my purse and the rest basically carry like this out. So I said to my daughter, see, this is what's going to happen because people don't know. And it really makes you think like, wow, if I don't have a purse with me or something, you're kind of out of luck, you know? So. These are big bags the township has. They hold a lot. Oh yeah. But people even, they should start hoarding the bags they have now so they can reuse them. Yeah. Yes. It's One coming fast. I would like to add to any publicity that we do about this, the produce bags, the things that you can put your green beans or whatever into, which are not bad, you can reuse those and mm -hmm. reuse them. Yep. Do that. I agree. They're not banned. You're right. Yep. And you can reuse them. The reusability of those could be mentioned in publicity. Mm -hmm. Well, repurpose. <laughs> repurpose. The first thing we need to explain oh, to know, people everybody. how to wean off uh, the the disposable bags, because yeah. uh, I think part of the the deal is that it's not just that they want to have the disposable bags, but they want to have the bagging service. Because normally you just say nothing and the cashier would automatically put it into bag. So, you know, having your own bag, many times uh, the cashiers would actually not put the merchandise into your own bag. You have to read by yourself. Right. And I think that's maybe part of the deal why people don't want to bring their own bags because they are losing the bagging service. Mm -hmm. ShopRite today, they offered to put uh, my groceries in, in the reusable bag. Yeah, Ooh, it's, it, they, they did, on, I do it yeah. myself. It depends on whom you hit, you know, some some people would do it. Mm -hmm. I know, yeah, but uh, it's not necessarily a rule. Right. Uh, well, I think the, the culture is a little different at various, uh, you know, supermarkets, but at the one that I use, they offer to, to pack it for you. And uh, so I'm surprised that they don't do it for everybody. Yeah. You go yeah. to Wegmans, Walter? Sorry, you go to Wegmans? No, this one is a stop and shop. Oh, I was going to say, because Wegmans will pack it for you in that too. Oh. Yeah. oh, okay. Costco doesn't use bags at all. Mm, right, right. <laughs> Nor does Aldi's. Mm. Aldi's is the other one. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Well, um, is that, is that, is anybody have any more discussion points? If not, we'll uh, ask again for public comment. From we have an uh, um, update maybe on stream cleanup. Okay. Uh, April 9th, when is that? April 9th, correct. Um, which is uh, the day after the event that Maria just mentioned. And um, so I, I meant to prepare uh, the whole flyer and, you know, I, I'm in the middle, I I'm started doing it. I was waiting for Heather to uh, create reservation link because we need to have a reservation for the event. 
Um, so I'm, um, I'm in the middle. I will complete it uh, shortly. And, uh, and then I can have it translated to Spanish. Um, and it's a, it is joint event with the New Brunswick Environmental Commission. Okay. Oh. Because it's a, it's, it's a, a stream that it's a neighbor. It's a, it's a border between uh, Franklin and, and New Brunswick. And of course, our other partners, uh, Lower Right Hand Watershed uh, and Partnership, uh, Watershed Institute, um, and um, who is the other? Uh, uh, ambassadors? Lower oh, Right Hand Watershed Shed Partnership. Partners, partnership, yeah. Yes, yes. The Watershed Institute and um, uh, the Corps. W A M B. I forgot the name. Anyway, um, uh, I'm gonna say uh, yes. So um, things are moving uh, in the right direction, and then uh, I I will I will send the text to uh, Bill Bowman so that he can um, post it on uh, in Franklin Reporter and Advocate. And if you send, if you send it to Tara, she can give it to Krista and Bob McQueen. Yep, correct. You can get it up yes. there. Yep, absolutely. What time? Because... What time does it start? Somehow I missed that. Uh, it starts nine thirty. Nine thirty. Okay. Ready to noon. Ed was asking. Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You're going, to, you're going to get a hold of the DPW and let them know that we're going to be doing that. Yeah, yeah. They have. Uh, they are always very reliable. They don't need to early notice, actually. Um, okay. I think they get overtime. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Might actually. Um, I need to check with uh, uh, our partner from New Brunswick. Because they should arrange for uh, uh, their own uh, Department of Public Works as well. Uh, so that we don't howl uh, their garbage, because uh, as it historically is, there is always more garbage on New Brunswick side. They will have to figure how to howl the uh, the abandoned vehicle unless they already took care of it. There is abandoned vehicle on on New Brunswick side. Okay. Huh. They need a tow truck. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. He had a lot of tires the last time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, so, Robin, um, we wanted to bring to um, commission attention also the the email from NJAC that uh, there is a resolution available uh, for environmental commission to pass on um, what was the wording? Municipal stormwater rights. I've right. Yes. Municipal yeah. stormwater rights. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, do we want to? You you printed it, Paul. Do we want to read it? And maybe. Yeah. It says um, we need your help today to fight back against the emerging threat to end municipal authority to protect citizens and properties from escalating impacts of the climate crisis. Several building associations and developers are lobbying the Department of Community Affairs to publish regulations that would prohibit municipalities from adopting stormwater management ordinances that are stronger than the minimum requirements set forth by the DEP for residential development. Current DEP stormwater rules explicitly state that municipalities may adopt standards that are more protective than the DEP's model ordinance, and municipalities have been doing this for years. The DCA Site Improvement Advisory Board has been entertaining recommendations from lobbyists to move forward with rules that prohibit municipalities from adopting stormwater ordinances that alter the residential site improvement standards. This is in direct conflict with DP stormwater rules. Being told that DCA staff uh, is ready to move forward with drafting and publishing their rules expeditiously. This is of tremendous, it's not very long. Uh, this is of tremendous concern to ANJAC and a significant number of environmental groups. To be clear, we see this as a move by DCA to limit municipalities' authority to adopt local policies that protect people and property from escalating threats of flooding due to poor stormwater management 
and worsening effects of the climate crisis. ANJEC and our environmental nonprofit partners have and will continue to have conversation with those in the governor's office and the highest levels of the DEP and DCA. Need your support to tell General uh, Governor Murphy and his administration, DCA and DEPs, that municipalities should retain the right to adopt ordinances to suit their own needs and protect against climate threat. And then, it, then they have this ordinance, um, the model ordinance. Resol uh, yeah. It is the, the resolution. Yeah, um, I I don't have it here. I did. I just yeah, 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 yeah. Command here. here. I'll put it up here. This is the model. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. Yeah, I, yeah. I want to move to that we uh, adopt it. Okay. Or what's the word? Yeah, yeah, adopt. Yeah, adopt the audience. Or, or recommend uh, the council for adoption. Uh, is it meant to be adopted? Thank you. Is it meant to be adopted by the commission or council or both? It says, please adopt this model resolution at your next EC meeting. Then tell us that your EC adopted the resolution so we can grow our case and protect your okay, municipality. So, so yeah. Just uh, uh, yeah. So if we pass it, then we just send it right into ANJEC. Great. Let's do it. Okay. There's been a second. Um, yes. Does any anybody discussion? have any discussions besides Stan and myself reading it? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has a discussion. Then uh, do uh, we do. We also pass this on to the council for their. I think we could. Yeah. 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 With with the uh, endorsement of Anjek as well. Right. Okay. Um, I'll call a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Stan, Stan did your hand up? Yeah, 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 I passed. Yeah, I, I mean, I, That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, any nays? No nays? The resolution is passed. And so um, I guess, Tara, what I have to do is sign it as the, as the president, as the chairman, and send yeah, it on. To I have to fill in the. Uh... The you know our pertinent information oh, and right. then I'll give okay. it to you for signature. Yep. Very good. Thank you. Okay. I I I had it ready, Stan, as you realized. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And I was afraid you want to go to the next uh, uh, public session. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now we need a resolution to open the uh, the uh, session again to the public. I move that we go to the public meeting. I second. Second. Second, okay, let's open that up, Tara, see if there's any, if we lost anybody or we kept everybody. Okay, we have Bill Bowman. Hi, Bill. Hello, still here, still nothing, thanks. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you for standing by. Yeah, and Eric, Eric um, signed off, I guess. Yep. Okay. So I, that's it for the public. I have a motion to close the uh, public comment period. I move to be closed the public comment period. A second. Second. Okay, um, all in favor to close the public comment period? Aye. 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 Resolution is passed. Um, I have another resolution. I move we adjourn the meeting. There you go. <laughs> Somebody second it. <laughs> second. Too fast. Let's okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion is passed.